guys welcome back and uh, thanks for tuning in so today's video I get asked a lot of questions about playing guitar and what I use my, the equipment I personally use so I'll end up doing a few of these videos but to start with today I thought I would run you through like my finger picks slides strings those kind of basic gear that I use in my toolkit let's have a look so I thought I'd start with my finger picks. I've been on quite a journey with trying to find the most suitable thing. Um, I have tried acrylic nails, like false nails. Um, I love the tone of them. I haven't ruled them out completely. I just find with my lifestyle, being a farm girl as well, a real outdoorsy, I find the upkeep to those quite difficult. So the next best thing I've found is these Alaska picks. So those little grooves are designed so as your nail slides in there, like yay. But the best thing about these picks is it also leaves the pad of the finger free to do any tapping or things like that as well. They feel quite natural as well. Like I, I find that that's really good and it's got a nice tone. Um, I do eat through them pretty quickly. I am a bit of a harder player, I guess, which is why. So at the end of a gig, you'll see this fine dusting <laughs> of this plastic just burned up all over the guitar. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with these. As far as where to order them, I've been just finding uh, people online on usually eBay and I buy up bulk. Um, I use the size small and mediums, but you can get like right up to extra large, I think. Um, yeah, so I'm still working on finding a reputable supplier for those, but uh, yeah. That's Galaska picks. So next up, we will look at my thumb picks. These ones get quite a bit of attention whenever I play live for some reason. I use the Fred Kelly Bumblebee teardrop pick. So they just slide onto the thumb like yay. You can swivel them to wherever you want them to be. Um, however, I want mine to just sit solid so that when I like really dig in it doesn't move so all I've done is just put a little tiny bit of gaff on the back of mine that's actually pretty worn but it does the job nicely um, the reason why I went for these particular thumb picks coming from a rock background it feels like a normal plectrum to me and especially if I want to do like a little tiny bit of, of speed work or something that feels quite authentic for me but as a thumb pick it sits nice and solid as well so I feel like I got the best of both worlds with these picks. I've been ordering mine from an online store based in the US called Strings and Beyond. I'll put the um, links down in my um, description below in case people want to check out these places that I've been ordering from. Now we move on to the journey that so many people ask me about and that is slides. There's a lot of information online about all the different slides. I'm just going to focus on my journey and what I use. I started off back in high school when I was only playing electric guitar and I bought this little stainless steel one, just a Jim Dunlop and it was fun but I didn't really get it. Um, I then thought I'd muck around with the tone of a glass slide. However, I got, again, another generic, just Jim Dunlop one. Very, very fine, if the camera's focusing on that. Yeah. Um, so I got the smallest gauge because I was trying to get one that would fit on my little finger so that I had these three fingers available for chords, fretting, all that kind of stuff. Again, with this particular slide, I still felt like something was missing. I then found out that, depending on the thickness of glass slides in particular, um, first of all, I should back up a second and say why I went for glass is because they have beautiful sustain and I quite like the tonal quality that comes from all the different, different glasses. So again, I won't go too deep into it, but basically, 
It's not just the thickness, but the color of the glass, um, kind of the density and things like that that will change the tone. It's a fascinating world. So anyway, I went out and I got this one. It's another Jim Dunlop because I didn't know where else you got slides other than from just a music store down the street, which for me is not down the street. For me, it was like four hours drive away. <laughs> um, so this one being thicker, I actually used this for quite a long time. Um, it had better, better sustain. Um, still wasn't quite the tone that I was looking for. Um, I used to wear it on my ring finger um, just because it was the only way I could get a snug fit. Now some slide players are really nifty and they can bend their finger inside the slide like that while they're playing to keep it stable. Me, I'm not that skilled. I did try it and it just didn't feel really secure. So that's when I'd moved on to my ring finger. Then I got this brainwave <laughs> that I don't want you to do. And that was, I got a tissue and I wrapped it around my finger and then I popped the slide on and I'm like, now it feels secure. It is possible to get a slide that fits you properly. So I highly encourage you do that. And yeah, no tissues guys. So finally online, I found um, diamond bottleneck slides uh, based in the US again now Ian McWee makes these slides and there's they are beautiful do check out the website and have a you know there's a lot of information there as well so you can explore a little bit more about glass slides and um, I think there's some porcelain based ones and things like that as well so I had contacted Ian with my woes of having really little fingers to try to get a um, glass slide to fit on. Gave him the dimensions of my pinky finger and he sent me one that fits perfectly. This is the Diamond Bottleneck Ultimate Slide. And uh, yeah, I loved the color and everything. It fitted perfectly. This one did me for years and years and then a sad, sad story. When I was rehearsing one day with my friends, I saw it roll off the table and land on the concrete. And yes, it cracked. If the camera will focus on that. Very, very sad. So why that is a problem? No, it's not rough. It's not dangerous, but, um, or this particular crack isn't anyway. But the, uh, it had actually changed the tonal quality of it, which I've kept it because it's fascinating that to me that that happens. Um, and I'm really attached to this slide. We've been through a lot together. So I then contacted Ian and told him what had happened. And um, he, was, he was very quick about getting me another one, thank goodness. And it's purple, which I was stoked with. That's one of my favorite colors. So thank you, Ian. Um, and yeah, again, I went for the super thick one because I really like the sustain that they offer. Um, the only one thing with this one is it was a little bit looser. So all I did is a quick little hack. You might be able to see some gaffer tape on the edge there. That gaff runs up inside the slide so that um, it just fits my finger a little bit more snugly and it's a bit more grippy as well and that doesn't change the sound at all. So yeah, when I purchased this, it retailed about 64 Australian dollars, which I think is an absolute bargain. So I highly recommend checking out Diamond Bottleneck Slides. I'll put the link down in my description below. So last of all is a slide that you guys haven't seen me use live, but um, yeah, my husband bought me a tone bar as a gift for me to start mucking around a little bit and I have been using it on my recordings. Um, I used it on the last album, the Heart Soul Feeling one for a couple of tracks, I'm sure. Definitely on the upcoming album anyway. So yeah, it's, it's a good weight. It's been really good for me to get started. I'm still learning to control this, um, you know, as I am regular slide, it's a lifelong journey. Um, the only thing that I have noticed is after getting to borrow a few of my friends tone bars, I actually feel like I'll probably end up exchanging this for one that has higher 
sides for my like that hugs my finger just a little bit more um, yeah other than that like the rounded end for pinpointing single notes and things like that is is fine it's just mainly it just, just doesn't sit comfortably as compared to some of the others that I've tried but that's my little one to get me started <laughs> Now this probably doesn't sound as interesting, but um, uh, I wanted to share with you a couple of capos. <laughs> so I, reg I used to just use these regular Jim Dunlop ones and they do a solid job. They're really great. But recently I purchased a shub. It is shub, isn't it? That's how you pronounce it? I think so. A shub deluxe 12 string capo. Now, I've been using this for all my guitars. Why? Because it's got that little toggle on the back that you can adjust the tension. And I've just found that this gives it, being a little bit longer for a 12 string, actually gives even the six string a bit better coverage. And I'm not getting any buzzing, fret buzzing or things like that, um, that I used to still struggle with a little with my other, uh, my other capos. So yeah, might be worth a go. So the other thing people ask me about is what strings I use. Now this is a long journey. Um, <laughs> I've used both coated strings and uncoated bronze, phosphor bronze. Um, yeah, you get the point. Basically, I keep circling back to elixir strings. However, I've recently started using some of these JVBs and I've been quite impressed with them. So I'm going to be continuing to explore them a little bit further. But performing live at the moment, I run through the uh, the bronze. I would prefer fossil bronze, actually, I think. I'm still kind of deciding that for my 12 string because it's a newer guitar for me. But yeah, the 10 to 47s is what I run on my 12 string. Then I have two six string guitars, acoustic guitars on stage with me. Now, one of them in the lighter, I guess you'd say the higher tension tunings, I use the 12 to 53s and the one that has the lower tension tunings I run the 12 to 56s because I love 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 that heavy bottom string. I will do a video later on introducing you to my guitars for those who haven't been to any of my shows and seen them and uh, and go through the tunings and things like that. Uh, and that'll explain a little bit more about what I mean about the tension. Um, but yeah, basically, that's what I've been using at the moment. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I will be back for more videos like this showing you what I'm using. So yeah, hopefully you've learned something and it answers some of those questions. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and help my channel grow so that I can keep this connection with you guys. Thank you. Keep help keep me connected. That's all folks.